Hello and welcome everyone. I'm your host Ajay Aditya C and today we'll be seeing how you can kickstart the financial year for your business with Zoho Books and Zoho Inventory. And just like the webinar I hosted last December, today I have a special guest joining me on our channel. Please welcome Harsha Vardhan, product marketer for Zoho Books. Hey Harsha, how are you? Hi Ajay, I am doing great. And hello everyone, I am Harsha from Zoho Books team and I am happy to be here. Excellent. So today we will be looking at an array of things for 2020 starting with how to configure opening balances and opening stock levels, after which we'll see how we can follow up on customer and vendor payments while reconciling bank feeds with transactions in Zoho Books. Following this, we'll budget the money we have for different things before moving on to stock planning and acquisition based on stock movement. Finally, we will utilize the tools inside of Zoho Inventory to clear the old stock from the last season. Before we jump in to our new year strategy, let's take a quick look at Zoho Inventory and Zoho Books and see how we can integrate the two. Zoho Books, as you might be aware, is a cloud-based online accounting system built for SMBs. It's industry agnostic for the most part and it can help you capture all your sales, purchases, projects and expenses while accounting for all of your cash flow. It also allows you to charge your customers via integrated payment gateways while giving you the ability to reconcile your bank feeds with appropriate transactions. Furthermore, it supports recurring transactions, a client portal, a dedicated accountant module, a host of customizations and a whole bunch of reports. It can be integrated with the rest of the Zoho Finance apps, Zoho CRM and Zoho Analytics for a centralized bookkeeping approach. Zoho Inventory on the other hand is a cloud-based online order management system that ties together your online sales from Amazon, Etsy and eBay and your multiple stores on Shopify with your offline sales and purchases across multiple warehouses and business locations. It supports a comprehensive inventory module that will allow you to categorize and group items and variants based on attributes, create bundles, offer services, drop ship or back order items and track them based on SKUs, serial numbers, batch numbers and barcodes. It can be further integrated with more than 30 shipping carriers, Zoho CRM and other applications to further its capabilities. Let's talk about integrating Zoho Books and Zoho Inventory. Now the most important thing to remember here is that Zoho Inventory and Zoho Books are seamlessly integrated and can be related to two different windows or doors to the same house meaning your data is common between the two apps and so is your organization. This means you cannot create a random organization in Zoho Inventory and another in Zoho Books and then hope to integrate these two completely different organizations that also have different org IDs. So how do we integrate Zoho Books and Zoho Inventory? Well, my advice is to first completely set up an organization in either Zoho Books or Zoho Inventory and then navigate to the integrations module of the app you are in, open Zoho Apps and hit the access button adjacent to the other app. For this example, I have begun my journey by setting up my organization inside Zoho Inventory and I have done nothing inside of Zoho Books. And so I'm going to connect my organization within Zoho Inventory to the same in Zoho Books. To integrate Zoho Inventory with Zoho Books, access the integrations module using the left hand sidebar and select Zoho Apps. Navigate to Zoho Books within Zoho Apps and hit the access Zoho Books button. And there we go. Upon doing so, any data that you have in Zoho Inventory will be made available within Zoho Books instantly. Now Harsha will show you how to set up your opening balances in Zoho Books. 
Thank you Ajay for showing us how to integrate Zoho Books with Zoho Inventory. Like you said, all data in inventory is now available in Zoho Books. Henceforth, any new operation that I perform in Zoho Books will be reflected in Zoho Inventory and vice versa. For example, if you create a sales order in Zoho Books, it will now be reflected in the sales order module of your Zoho Inventory. Similarly, if you delete the sales order in inventory, it will be deleted in Zoho Books. Now, I am going to tell you how to set up opening balances in Zoho Books. Setting up opening balances should be your first agenda when you start accounts with any accounting software. They ensure that your accounts are accurate and help you keep historic account logs. But what exactly is an opening balance? Let me quickly give you a brief introduction. Opening balance is the total funds available in a business account when a new firm starts bookkeeping for the first time. In case of an existing firm, opening balance is the total funds available at the beginning of an accounting period. If your business has recently switched to Zoho Books from another accounting software, the closing balance of the previous software will become the opening balance in Zoho Books. In this case, you will have to ensure that all details from the previous accounts are brought into Zoho Books. So, creating a chart of accounts naturally becomes the first step in the process of creating opening balances in Zoho Books. Let us see how to do that. Zoho Books by default has more than 40 different accounts. To access these accounts, click on the Accountants tab and select Chart of Accounts. To create a new account, click on the plus new account button here. Now enter the account type followed by the account name. Check this box if it is a sub account and choose parent account in the box below. Type in the account code and description here. An account code is a unique six digit number assigned to an account under the chart of accounts. It can be used to quickly retrieve accounts in an organization while creating transactions. Click Save. Once done, you will see the list of accounts added to your organization. However, what if you have already have a chart of accounts from your previous accounting software that you just wish to import to Zoho Books? Well, you can do that too. Let us see how. First. Export the accounts from your previous accounting software. Now, click on the drop down arrow next to the gear icon and select Import Chart of Accounts and upload the file. Download the sample file from Zoho Books here and use it as a reference to arrange the data in your Chart of Accounts file and save it. Make sure the file is in either CSV, TSV or XLS format. After uploading your file, you will need to match or map the headers in your file to the account names in Zoho Books. Click Next to proceed and import data. Now that we know how to configure the chart of accounts, let us see how to enter opening balances. First, go to Settings and select Opening Balances. Here. The accounts are grouped into accounts payables and receivables, assets, expenses, liabilities, bank accounts, equity and income. Enter the opening balance date here. This date is usually the date you started using Zoho Books. This applies to both new and existing customers. Enter balances of all your accounts here using the trial balance report from your existing accounting system. In case a particular account is not available in the predefined list, you may add an account to be included in the opening balance by clicking here. Now let us see how to enter accounts receivable and accounts payable balances. Accounts receivable is the closing balance of the amount you are yet to receive from your customers in your previous accounting system, whereas accounts payable is the closing balance of the amount you owe your vendors in your previous accounting system. And there are three ways to enter account receivable and accounts payable balances. The first method 
is to import only the opening balances of your customers and vendors. This is used when you have already added your customer and vendor details in Zoho Books. The second method and the easiest is to import your customers and vendors data along with their opening balances. The third way is to simply enter the opening balances of customers and vendors individually. Now let us see how to import your customers and vendors to Zoho Books along with their opening balances. This method is the most efficient way to enter your opening balances. This is because as you import your customer and vendor data for the first time, you can also bring in their opening balances simultaneously, thereby saving you precious time. To do this, go to sales and then customers. Click the hamburger icon in the top right corner. Click import customers and upload your import file that contains all customer details and opening balances in the page that follows. You can download and refer to the sample file to update your data. Click next and map the fields in Zoho Books with the import file headers. You can also select the number of decimal places for your opening balances. Click next once done and import your data. You can follow the same steps to import vendors to Zoho Books along with their opening balances. All your customers and vendors along with their outstanding balances will be imported to Zoho Books in this method. Apart from this, you can also enter the opening balances for other accounts such as your assets and liabilities, income and expenses, bank balances and equity by navigating to the opening balances module under settings. One of the key asset accounts that you need to update while configuring opening balances is the inventory asset account. This is an individual record that needs to be matched against each item. You can either do that manually inside of opening balances in Zoho Books or you can update them while importing items into either Zoho Books or Zoho Inventory. Ajay will show you how to go about them in the next section. When it comes to recording opening stock values and inventory asset values into Zoho Inventory and Zoho Books, especially for a substantial amount of SKUs, the best way to go about them is through item imports. Now I have prepared an item CSV file containing opening stock numbers and inventory asset values in accordance to the item sample file within Zoho Inventory with the help of a spreadsheet software. Now this is done only for those who are setting up Zoho Inventory or Zoho Books for the very first time. Those of you who have been using Zoho Books or Zoho Inventory for at least a year do not need to do this every year. So how did I create the file? Well, I exported an item sample file from the item import page of Zoho Inventory, opened it on a spreadsheet software and loaded my data under appropriate columns. Within the import file, I paid extra attention to the following four columns. The opening stock, wherein I entered the stock I have on hand for different items at the moment. Number two, the opening stock rate, wherein I updated the average cost price of my opening stock units. Number three, the inventory account column, which would be inventory asset for me. And finally, the item type, which should be inventory. After loading everything, I saved the file as a .csv and renamed the file. Now we are going to import it quickly into Zoho Inventory database. To begin, navigate to the items module, click on the menu button from the top right of the item list and select import items from the drop down. A typical import is a three stage process. Stage one or the file upload stage is where you upload the file and choose the character encoding. I'm going with the default one here and you can also choose to override the duplicates in case you are re-importing existing items but with new data. Now we proceed to the next stage. 
Stage two or the mapping stage is where you match the fields in Zoho inventory with the column headers inside the file. The best thing about this is that fields with similar names get mapped automatically. When you proceed to the stage three or the preview stage, you will know the status of data that's being imported into Zoho inventory. This is also the place where you can identify problems or errors with the file and go back to fix them before you finalize the import. Upon importing your items with opening stock values and linking them to the inventory asset account, we have automatically updated the balance sheet inside of Zoho Books. You can also check this out by referring to the inventory valuation summary inside of Zoho Inventory Reports module. Now for those of you who are regular users of Zoho Books and Zoho Inventory, or in other words, those of you who have been and are using at least one of these two apps, you don't have to update your opening balance and opening stock every year because Zoho Books and Zoho Inventory keep updating your balance sheet as well as your stock levels based on transactions you record as well as your real-time stock movement. In the next section, Harsha will demonstrate how to go about bank reconciliation inside of Zoho Books. Before I jump in and show you about managing payments and bank reconciliations, let me first give a brief overview about the connection between banking and accounting. Earlier, we always dealt with accounting and banking separately. You pay and receive money via your bank and you record the same transactions in your accounting software, which led to a tedious reconciliation process where you have to check each and every transaction on both ends and make sure the balance in your accounting records and the balance in your bank matches perfectly. To reduce this manual process, Zoho Books allows you to connect your bank directly within the app. Once connected, Zoho Books will fetch feeds periodically from your bank, match your feeds with transactions, and help you reconcile the transaction with just a few clicks. To begin, let's see how to connect your bank account with Zoho Books. Go to the banking module using the left sidebar. Now, click Add Bank or Credit Card button. Upon doing so, you can choose between two major account information service providers, Yardly and Token. If you click on the drop-down button here, you can see a list of major banks supported by Yardly and Token. If your bank is on the list, Zoho Books will be able to fetch your transaction feeds directly from the bank. If you cannot find your bank on this list, it means that you have to add your bank account manually and your bank feeds will have to be imported manually. To enter your account manually, click here. Select your account type. Enter your account name. If you have an account code, you can enter it here. Fill in your account number, bank name and all other details and click save. Your account is now added to Zoho Books. Now we are going to import a bank statement into Zoho Books. So get your bank statement ready as a spreadsheet file. Go to the account that you created now from inside the banking module. Click on the import statement button. Download the sample file here. Now open your bank statement and categorize the data in the same way as shown in the sample file. Make sure the column headers match and are in the same order as in the sample file. It is important to remember that Zoho Books supports CSV, TSV, OFX, QIF and CAMT.053 file formats and the maximum file size should be 1 MB. So your file should meet all these criteria. If everything is correct, upload the file from your computer. Click next to proceed. The next step is to map the imported file headers with the fields in Zoho Books. The best match to each field for the selected file will be auto-selected. Click Next if everything is correct. 
you will be able to preview your import details here. You can check for errors and unmapped fields. If you want to make any changes, you can click previous to edit your import preferences. If everything is good to go, click import to complete the process. If you have uploaded the wrong bank or credit card statement or uploaded the same statement twice, you can undo your last import by clicking the settings icon on the top right corner and selecting undo last import. After successfully importing the bank statement, we will see the entries listed here as uncategorized transactions. Now, we have to match these uncategorized transactions from the bank statement to their corresponding sales or percentage receipts or expenses in Zoho Books. To demonstrate this, I have pre-recorded few invoices in Zoho Books to show you how you can match the payments you receive to your bank account from your customers to their corresponding invoices in Zoho Books. Here, you can see that I have an unpaid invoice from my customer, John Wick. But he has already sent me the money to my bank account. So I have to categorize his payment inside the banking module to match it with this invoice here. Let's see how. Go to your bank account now and switch to uncategorized transactions tab here. Here, I will select the uncategorized transaction of $400 which I received from John Wick. A panel containing two tabs will open on the right. The first tab reflects the possible matches for this field. If there are no matches, select the categorize manually. Here, I am going to select the category as customer payment and the customer name as John Wick. You can enter the bank charges, if any, here and attach any documents related to the transactions here. Hit save. Now, the money you received from John Wick to your bank has been categorized or matched with his invoice. And his invoice has been marked as paid. Similarly, if you have paid for any expenses from your bank, like the rental expense of $2,000 that I have paid here, you can categorize it and it will be reflected in the expenses module. Additionally, Zoho Books allows you to create tools that can help categorize similar transactions automatically. Let me explain. Now, I know that I would be paying my rent of $2,000 every month. So, I can tell Zoho Books to automatically categorize payments from the same account with the same amount next time. You can access the transaction rules settings by clicking on the gear icon here. Here, I am going to select the payee details as Harsha, which is my name. Now, I am going to select the amount as $2000. And here, I am going to enable this option that will tell Zoho Books to automatically categorize bank entries the next time as long as both the amount and the name are the same as above. Once you have categorized all transactions, your account is ready for reconciliation. In Zoho Books, you can reconcile an account to ensure that the transactions in your bank account match with the transactions you have created in Zoho Books. But before you proceed with bank reconciliation, please ensure that the opening balance is correct. The opening balance cannot be edited once the transactions have been reconciled. To initiate the reconciliation procedure, select the account for which you would like to reconcile transactions. Click the settings drop down in the top right corner of the page. Select reconcile account. Click the initiate reconciliation button in the top right corner of the page. Enter the start date and end date of the period you would like to reconcile. Enter the closing balance for that period within Zoho Books. Click Start Reconciliation. Select the transactions you would like to reconcile. You can also add a transaction to adjust your cleared amount by selecting the plus add transaction option below the transaction list. Please remember that only the matched 
categorized and manually added transactions will be shown in the reconciliation window. Also, to reconcile your accounts, you need to make sure that the closing balance and the cleared amount are the same and the difference is zero. If needed, you can also edit the closing balance here. Now, click reconcile to finish the process. If you would like to do the reconciliation later, click save and reconcile later instead. Since we are at the beginning of the year 2020, I would also like to introduce you to the new budgets module in Zoho Books, using which you can create an annual budget and track your actual spend against the planned expenditure throughout the year. Setting an annual budget can help you to plan your finances so that you always have sufficient funds for your business activities. Now, why is budgeting important for any business? Let's try to understand this with the help of a simple example. As a business owner, you know that a business has certain debt obligations and upkeep costs. These can be rent or mortgage, utilities, loans or lines of credit, vendor accounts, professional services, insurance, payroll, purchasing obligations, and advertising. Imagine the potential implications if a business is not able to meet just one of the above mentioned financial obligations because of poor budgeting. Complications with payroll leads to frustrated employees. Not having insurance leaves the company open to liability. And issues in paying rent or mortgage have their own disastrous consequences. While there are successful businesses out there that run without a plan, the ones that do have a more accurate picture of the income and expenses. Let us now see how to create budget in Zoho Books. First, go to the Accountant tab using the left hand sidebar and click on Budget. Click Plus New Budget in the top right corner to access the budget creation page. Now, enter a name to identify your budget. Select the financial year for which you would like to create a budget. Select a time period for your budget. The budget period can either be monthly, quarterly, half yearly or yearly. Now, there are three ways in which you can allocate money for all your accounts. You can enter them manually, pre-fill based on previous year's actuals or out of fill accounts. You can enter the budget manually by typing in the amounts in the fields provided next to the respective accounts. For this example, I am going to populate my budget for the interest income as $1000, $2000 and $3000. If you would like to create a budget based on one of your previous year's business performance, you can do just that in Zoho Books. To do so, click Prefill from previous year's actuals. Select a previous year. Click Apply. Click Save. This is particularly useful to businesses that have been using Zoho Books for more than a year. Now, instead of entering the amount for each account and period individually, you can simply enter the initial amount for an account and choose to autofill values for the subsequent periods based on the initial amount. To do that, select the budget. Click on the pencil icon to edit. Now, hover your cursor over the account type which you want to autofill. You will see the autofill link. For example, Let's say I want to budget my office rent. It would be a fixed amount of $2000 per month till the end of this year. So I place my cursor over the rent expense under the expense account and click on autofill next to it. Now I get three options. Since my office rent is going to be the same amount for the next 12 months, I'll choose apply fixed amount for each period. I'll enter my rent as $2000 here. In the preview pane below, you will see that my rent has been auto populated as $2000 for all months this year. Now click save for this to be reflected in your budget. Now let's see another example. Say 
you have set a digital advertising and marketing budget for your business at $500 and you are planning to increase it by $5 every month. You do not have to calculate the amount manually and enter here in Zoho books. Just click on autofill next to the advertising and marketing account under the expense account type, select adjust by amount for each period and type $5. Now enter the first period's amount as $500. In the preview pane, you can see that the amount is steadily increasing by $5 every month. You can also adjust the budget by percentage for each period here. Once you have recorded your income and expenses, a net profit and loss estimate will be automatically calculated by Zoho Books and you can see it here. Hit save after finalizing the budget. The phrase budget versus actual is a shorthand for budget to actual variance analysis. It refers to the process of comparing estimated results to actual results. In Zoho Books, once you have created a budget, you can know how your business is actually performing against your forecasted budget using a comprehensive report of your budget variance. To compare them, go to Accountant, then Budgets. Click View Budget versus Actuals. This report consists of two columns, Accounts and Time. The time is again further divided into Budget Actual and Over Budget. Under the budget column, you can see the amount allocated to each account. In the actual column, you will see the actual amount spent or received for the account. With the help of the over budget column, you will know if you are meeting your budget goals or not. You can also export, customize and print budget summary. Now that we have budgeted our money and allocated funds for different activities, Let's see how we can evaluate our current stock situation using Zoho Inventory. There are two Zoho Inventory reports that you can rely on when it comes to planning your inventory for the next season. The first report on our menu is the stock summary report that can accurately calculate your opening and closing stock for a chosen period of time. You can also filter your results based on location and monitor the amount of stock coming in and going out of a particular warehouse or business location for that period. You can run this report for the same quarter or month across different past years to compare how your item stock numbers have been for the same period across these years. And you can use this as a base to arrive at a rough reorder level for your items. The second report on our menu is the Inventory Valuation Summary or a report that can accurately calculate the value of items that are currently in your possession. Knowing your inventory asset value can help you determine what items to be sold, what items need to be restocked or what items need to be stashed away. And it will also help you decide what items can be used as a possible collateral against future investments. Additionally, if you also have subscribed for Zoho Analytics on top of Zoho Inventory, then you can integrate Zoho Inventory and Zoho Analytics to use your stock data and create custom reports such as the ABC Analysis Report or a Sales Forecast to aid you with your inventory planning. As you can see here, I have already integrated my Zoho Inventory organization with Zoho Analytics to enable advanced analytics for my company. And I have made a host of reports using advanced analytics, including the ABC analysis report that I am showing to you right now. Now, if you're curious about this report and if you wish to try advanced analytics for your organization, then I have made a video on advanced inventory analytics just for you. And I'll be leaving the link to it in the YouTube description of the recorded version of this webinar. Alternatively, you can also go on YouTube and search for a video titled five must have inventory reports for online sellers to watch it right away.
armed with the data from reports, the next thing you have to do is to verify if the current inventory values are true by counting your inventory. Should you find a mismatch between the actual stock of an item available within your warehouse and its physical stock inside of Zoho inventory, you can use item adjustments to fix the stock value and attach a valid reason to the adjustments you make. You can either adjust stock for items individually by navigating to item adjustments within the items module of Zoho inventory and hitting the new button from the top right or you can do a bulk adjustment for multiple items with the help of a dedicated option within the new adjustment form inside Zoho inventory. I'm going to quickly do an adjustment for you, so just watch the show. After verifying the current stock levels of all items in your inventory, we'll have to reorder relevant low stock items to ensure that we don't face a stock out situation in the upcoming season. So in this section, I'll show you how to set up reorder levels low stock alerts and preferred vendors for items inside of Zoho inventory. Before we begin setting up reorder levels, let us enable some stock alerts within Zoho inventory. To do so, click on the gear icon from the top right and select preferences from the drop down menu. In the following window, select items under preferences. Here, you can configure a number of things related to the items module. Let's enable out of stock and reorder notification alerts. And while we are at it, let's specify an email address to receive these alerts and hit save to finish. Next, we are going to set the reorder level and associate a preferred vendor to an existing item by editing it. To begin, click on items from the left hand sidebar and select the item sub module from the drop down menu. Navigate to the preferred item using the item list view and click on it to open its details. In the following page, click on the edit button from the top right to proceed to the item edit page. Here you will find various fields teeming with information. Scroll down to the inventory section of the page and add a reorder quantity to it. Associate a preferred vendor for this item by selecting the appropriate vendor from your network of vendors using the preferred vendor dropdown. Hit save to finish. Upon doing this, you will be notified whenever the stock on hand for this item drops below the reorder quantity. And you will be able to quickly restock them by generating purchase orders to its preferred vendor. You can also update reorder levels in bulk by exporting your item list as an Excel file or a CSV file and then opening this file on a spreadsheet software to add or edit data under the reorder level column. And then you can import the updated file into Zoho inventory while enabling the override option in the stage one of the import cycle. So if you're wondering how to import items, we already saw that in one of the earlier sections of this webinar. So please refer to that. The only change is that when you are in the stage one of the import, enable the overwrite option to update data for items. Now let's see how we can reorder and restock a low stock item. You can identify your low stock items in a number of ways from the list that gets mailed to you every day into your inbox to applying a dedicated filter within the items module. That said, the easiest way to access all your low stock items in one place is to go to the Zoho inventory dashboard and click on the low stock count. Doing so will take you to a dedicated view within the items module with all of the items that are currently low on stock. This list is generated based on the reorder levels set by you. Now you can restock them in two ways. The first method involves selecting the list of items that you wish to order and 
hitting the new transaction button up top and then selecting the purchase order option from the drop down. Doing so will take you to a new purchase order form where you can specify the vendor, the warehouse where you wish to receive these items and other quantities before you hit the save button and email the order to the vendor later. The second method involves a more refined approach to restocking. In this method, we'll need to first ensure that all low stock items have preferred vendors. And then we navigate to the vendors module under purchases with the help of the left hand sidebar. Following this, we'll apply a special filter called vendor reorder items. Doing so will list all those vendors that have at least one uh, low stock item associated to them. Click on one of the vendors to open their details page wherein you will see an alert prompting you to reorder the low stock items associated to that particular vendor. Click on order now to access a new purchase order form linked to this vendor along with the list of all current low stock items that are associated to this particular vendor. Choose the items you prefer to reorder and specify their quantity. Select the appropriate warehouse and hit save to finish. Now email the draft purchase order to the vendor by hitting the email button. When the vendor delivers the goods to your warehouse, record a purchase received. Now if you are wondering, a purchase received is similar to a GRN or a goods receipt note and will increase the physical stock level of the purchased items. Convert the received into a bill or a vendor invoice by clicking on the option adjacent to the received document. Add a bill number and ensure that the item cost prices are in line with the physical invoice sent by your vendor. Make the necessary changes and hit save to finish. By recording a bill, you are increasing the accounting stock inside of Zoho inventory. You can then record payments against this bill later. Clearing old stock. Now that we have seen how to make use of purchases and reorders, let's focus on the stock from the previous season. The biggest problem with unsold items from the last season that are irrelevant to the current season is that they'll be taking up valuable shelf space in your inventory and are going to add to your inventory holding costs until they become relevant to your customer base again later this year. And there are some items which may never become relevant again. So here are three strategies that you can use to clear them off while also trying to make it profitable. Strategy 1. Offer post-season discounts on certain products. Strategy 2. Focus on a different market by taking your business online and target customers in another region or country. Strategy 3. Bundle your unsold items from the last season with the items that are relevant to the current season and promote them as value-added kits. Let's start with strategy number 1 discounts. In Zoho inventory, you can enable discounts for your transactions by navigating to the settings with the help of the gear icon from the top right and clicking on preferences from the drop down. Under general preferences, you can configure the way you go about discounts by choosing one of the three options available to you. I am going with the option that gives discounts at an item level before hitting save. Doing this will allow you to associate discounts with individual items on transactions. However, in this method, you will need to associate discounts manually every time you transact. So what do I do if I want to give discounts to only certain customers, items or transactions? Well, you can do this with the help of price lists. Now price lists are lists that allow you to alter the prices of a few preferred items or all the items in your inventory by a set margin or a percentage. But first, we have to enable this module for our organization. To enable price lists, if you haven't already, click on the gear icon from the top right 
and select preferences from the drop down menu. In the following window, select items under preferences. Here, you can configure a number of things related to items. Let's enable both the options under price lists and hit save. Next, we are going to create a price list from the items module in our inventory by selecting the back option from the top left and navigating to the item sub module using the left hand sidebar. And in the items module, I'm going to select price lists. To add a new price list, click on the plus new price list button from the top right. In the following page, name the list, select whether it's a sales price list or a purchase price list. So I'm going to go with the sales here since we are planning to give discounts on items from the previous season. Under item rate, we have two options. We can either increase or decrease item rates by a percentage, or we can individually enter new sales prices for each of the item in our inventory. I'll pick option one, mark up or mark down the item rates by a percentage. Under description, let's call it a post holiday clearance sale. And now under percentage, click on the drop down menu adjacent to it and select markdown. Next, enter the percentage to be discounted from the original item rate. Let's go with 15% for this example. Under round off menu, I'm going to round off item rates to the nearest whole number. Let us hit save to finish. Now you can associate this list to sales orders, invoices and customers to give up discounts appropriately. Additionally, you can also associate price lists to item if you go with the second option under item rates while you are creating a new price list. Condition-based automated discounts. Now, if you're the type that would rather go for a conditional discount wherein you give the customer a discounted price on products if they buy stuff over an X amount, then you can do so with the help of custom functions in Zoho Inventory. Now custom functions are simple code fragments that you can write to make Zoho Inventory behave in a certain way when one or more preferred conditions are met. Today we are going to write a custom function to provide a 10% discount to customers whose invoice total exceed $200. To begin, click the gear icon and go to automation. Click the drop down button next to the plus new workflow rule button. Select custom function. In the following page, let's name it as clearance sale. In the description, we'll go with apply a 10% discount when the invoice total exceeds $200. Now the module will be invoice and the workflow type shall be event based. The basic condition will be when the invoice is created. Now we want to trigger this custom function when the total is greater or equal to $200. I have already prepared a script for this. And so I am going to simply copy and paste it into the deluge pane. I'll be leaving the code fragment in the YouTube description of this recording so that you can make use of this as well. Now let's hit save to finish. Henceforth, a discount of 10% will be applied to all invoices whose total exceed $200 until you take down the automation workflow. Strategy number two, focus on a new market. This method is especially relevant to those businesses that deal primarily in seasonal items, such as clothing. Imagine stocking up on winter wear before the holiday season you had estimated the demand and made purchases accordingly. You also sold a good number of winter clothes between September and December. But now you are left with a sizable inventory of winter clothes and a saturated local market. Most people would recommend selling your goods at a discount just to free up capital, even at a loss. But online sales is yet another viable option using which you can target those markets where there is still demand for winter wear or for your product. For instance, you can sit on your inventory for a month or two 
and then choose to promote them to potential customers living in South America or Australia during March or April if you are the person dealing in winterwear. Now Zoho Inventory enables you to do that by allowing you to integrate with multiple online sales channels and shopping carts like Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Zoho Commerce and Shopify. By integrating with one of these online channels, you can automate the generation of your online orders, add new customers, fulfill orders and maintain consistent stock levels across all integrated channels. Now if you want to learn more about these integrations, I'll be leaving links to more online sales videos in the YouTube description of this recording. So you can watch them later or you can just search them on YouTube. Clearance strategy number three, kitting. This is more a composite strategy that can be used in tandem with strategies one and two. The idea is to create a composite item to bundle together different items that are relevant to the current season with the items belonging to the previous season and offer them to customers as a value added bundle. Now let me show you how to create a composite item inside Zoho inventory. But before we do that, first we'll need to enable composite item for our organization. And so click on the gear icon from the top right and select preferences from the drop down. Navigate to items under preferences using the secondary sidebar. Enable composite items and hit save to finish. Hit the back arrow to exit the settings module. Click on items on the left hand sidebar and select composite items from the drop down. Click the plus button beside the composite items module or the plus new button on the top right corner. Now let's give it a name, say cool summer bundle one and specify a stock keeping unit and a unit of measurement for this composite item. Next, we are going to associate a few items such as a couple of spring clothes and a woolen scarf in desired quantities. Now the woolen scarf is one of my items from the old stock that I'm trying to get rid of. So you can also think of the arrangement of items as a bundling formula. So I'm just throwing in a couple of spring clothes and one or two woolen scarves. Now we can auto populate the cost and the sales price based on individual item prices for the composite item. And then we'll tinker it a little bit to make the price more attractive to the end customer. Now you, we can add a sales description if necessary. Now in this case, I'm just going to add the constituents of this bundle, the sales description and hit save to finish. The next step is to perform a bundling operation to make it ready for sale. Let's make a few bundles of the composite item that we just created. To do so, hit the create bundle button within the composite item. Specify a bundling number, a date and the number of bundles you need and choose the warehouse within which you would like to create the bundles for this composite item. Add the items and services of your choice. While doing so, you will be able to see how many bundles you can make with the available inventory of constituting materials. Click save bundle to finish the operation. Now the stock level of the composite item has gone up by the bundled amount while the stock level of the associated inventory items has gone down based on the formula we specified while creating the composite item. These items can either be sold offline or be linked to the same bundles on your online store in order to sell them to other markets. That concludes our inventory planning and clearance strategies. Harsha will now summarize the session for you before we open the session for some Q&A. To summarize, we began the session by integrating Zoho Inventory and Zoho Books, following which we saw how to configure opening balances in Zoho Books. We also saw how to bulk update opening stock levels and inventory asset values in Zoho Inventory using item imports. We then connected a bank with Zoho Books and saw how we could match bank feeds with relevant transactions before reconciling them. Following this, 
we saw how to budget the money we have for different things before moving on to stock planning and accusation based stock movement. Finally, we discussed three strategies to clear out old stock using the tools available in Zoho inventory. That concludes today's session on kickstart your financial year with Zoho books and Zoho inventory. We hope you found the contents of this webinar useful. In case you have questions, please drop an email to either support at the rate zoho-inventory.com or to support at the rate zohobooks.com. We are coming up with more interesting topics this year, so please subscribe to our Twitter and YouTube channels. I'm going to leave the links on the screen as well as in the webinar description on YouTube. Thank you for joining us today and we wish you all a great year ahead. Cheers.